technology is creating more of a shared learning situation, more of a participatory learning system, where I can still show or I can still contribute the the old material, if you like, the the <laughs> the poem or the novel or the story, and the kids are then able to bring me in the new technology. They know how to find it out there because they're out there all the time, and it gives them a sense of empowerment. I think to say I can do that, and they bring it in and share it. Um, and it creates a heightened interest in the material, I think, when they, when they have that kind of new spin on things. Uh, the technology that we have available to us now uh, for a second language teacher, one of the most exciting things about it is that um, it really does uh, take what used to be sort of one teacher and 30 students and everybody's learning the same thing the same way at the same time. Uh, it makes it a lot more individualized. I think that every learner now has the opportunity to learn at a speed that's comfortable for them to produce things uh, uh, at a level that they're, uh, that's um, challenging enough for them uh, or easy enough for them. Um, and I think through that uh, it taps into things like their creativity, um, uses many of their different intelligences. Uh, uh, you know, some people are more visual, some people are more auditory, etc. And I think that, uh, you know, instead of them only knowing my voice in the second language, it gives them the opportunity to hear others. One of the ways that you can create that magic is providing opportunities for the students not only to pursue what interests them, which that can be done through technology, but I also think another important point is that they can collaborate with each other and then bring it back and present their ideas. I think that's the full picture. I've learned so much from students who are really weak um, or who struggle um, in school and I learn a lot from them when I see them use um, the internet for example to create um, some um, when they use the internet to uh, follow a certain number of steps or to how to use an actual program that I haven't got any idea how to use and they have no trouble using it but then if I ask them to follow a series of steps um, on a page or on a book, um, they just sit there. And I've seen that. So I've seen them engage, especially um, s uh, slow learners or uh, learning disabled students. I find that technology um, is a way to break down those barriers that um, keeps them from thinking that they can't learn something. And it shows me that they have actually learned something and they can follow directions, but they're motivated to follow directions when it has to do with something they're interested in. When you're using technology in, a, in any classroom setting, I think it's it's ideal to let the to let the project to let the assignment be as open-ended as possible. And by open-ended, I mean that you you don't want to have you know a fixed starting point that it must be a 500-word essay or it must be uh, a pencil sketch or it must be page. Uh, but we let it be a sketch. We'll let it be as open-ended as, as possible. If you're strong in your curriculum and you understand what the outcomes are, what the students are supposed to show or what's supposed to be reflected, I think that it's easy to evaluate the technology if you know what you're looking for. So I think if you're strong in your curriculum and you understand it, then it will be clear that how the learning has taken place and how you would evaluate it. When you're, I guess, comparing the two forms, the, the written form, the pen and paper, the essay, the structure, compared to a student who chooses to uh, make the assignment um, maybe a web-based or a PowerPoint. There are things that you are going to be missing, the structuring, word usage, diction, what have you, but you really have to look at the assignment and you know what percentage of my weighting of the assignment was based upon these things. Was my real outcome for the students to develop an understanding of, say, the novel or, or whatever we're trying to evaluate, and can that be expressed digitally? You know, not in the traditional word on paper, be it printer or pencil. And that can be done in most cases, and sometimes it may involve adapting a rubric or, or things like that. But it, it's, once you make that step and you, you bridge that gap, it becomes easier to do, and the kids or the students will really appreciate that step that you've taken towards them. The technology provides an asynchronous method of them solving or doing assignments 
they're not all doing it all at one time with me leading the class. They're working at their pace. And if there's a problem, then I can come and help them. But they also have the spell checker in the word processing thing. They have the search functions in a, in a web browser or search engine. And they can focus on keywords as well because of, I guess, the power of, of the software that, that you can use. So there's all kinds of applications. And I mean, these are just general research and interaction uses that would apply in a history class, in a, a French class, science class, phys ed class, whatever the subject. I had an interesting experience recently with a calculus class that I teach. A student came to me and said that several of them had formed a group on Facebook to help support each other through an assignment. And he wanted to know, was that okay with me? And I thought, how cool is that? You know, they're interested enough in, of course, it matters, right? The course matters to them because of the nature of the course. But in addition, they went out of the ordinary so that they could bring more people together at one time to work through uh, questions that were challenging. I thought it was fabulous. And of course, I said, absolutely. I've still got my fallback for other assessments. My assignments are for growing knowledge, perfect use of modern technology to support learning. Thank <laughs> you.